go. <laughs> Hello, everyone. This is uh, Defense Threat Insights, the weekly group discussion. Um, we uh, have an agenda. Do we usually share the, the screen for the agenda? I, might, I can do that. Sure. I'll do that. Sure, why not, right? I'll do that. I always try to scroll it up. Or like earlier, I was trying to scroll the screen through Zoom. And I like, oh, wait, no. <laughs> this is not mine. This is not my this. <laughs> cool. So every, everybody's seen the, the, the uh, is there any follow-up from previous discussions that we need to? That sounds like a no. Oh, sorry. I think there, if I remember correctly, all the previous discussions were based on planning breakdown issues. And so I think if we just continue to planning breakdown, we'll be good. Awesome. Hello, Daniel. Welcome. Hello. We just, uh, we just continue with the, with the previous discussions. Uh, um, we're going to go down to planning breakdown. Did you have anything from last meeting that you want to discuss? So you, you happy to keep going? Uh, happy to keep going. Awesome. Uh, I've seen the demo. I have no comments. Looks great, Alexander. Any anyone else have comments? Looks good. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, oh, I should put Jonathan's name next to this. This was a, a team effort. <laughs> I'm the silent partner on this one. <laughs> take take credit if it works well. Otherwise, you you're ready. <laughs> yeah. That's a UI thing, it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's clearly labeled as front end. <laughs> What's going on? It's like all uh, the demo all the demos come from the front end guys. <laughs> yeah. I know we need to up our game in the in the back end, show some terminal screens, get people excited <laughs> with the, some log files. I wanna see some GraphQL <laughs> endpoints, yeah, getting hit. I wanna yeah. see a screenshot of that or I don't know, a database migration running. <laughs> Just scrolling through logs. Yeah, all right. All right, moving on to add ability to undo multiple vulnerability dismissals. Um, I am not super familiar with it, but it, it looked pretty straightforward. It's already got weights on. Uh, do we have anything to add from front end or back end? Nope, there's just um, some initial comments by me trying not to get out, trying to get out of work. But uh, Matt and Andy, unfortunately, gave some goody, pretty good reasoning on why we need this. So I <laughs> guess we'll do it. You're saying the inside part out loud, Alexander. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so I meant, I mean, I user cases. We are recording this. <laughs> <It's> fine. <laughs> Next. <laughs> oh, Tiago, you're muted. Am I muted? I'll say you can bribe me later if I so I don't upload it to YouTube. Uh, so we, I, I put down the 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 combined weight. Um, it doesn't look like it's going to need multiple iterations. Are we all happy for me to move it to ready for dev or? Do we need a refining step? I am the least qualified to ask this or answer this, but on the weights, do we normally combine front end plus back end? We do. It was uh, uh, maybe a not very well communicated decision uh, from Lindsay and I. Gotcha. Uh, the page, the page actually says the the combined weight should be the closest Fibonacci sequence, but I think that's way too technical. I'm just I've I've just been adding them, so it would have been eight the next number, but you know potato potato. Um, I, I, all I'm interested in is the the ability to to um, gauge the combined team velocity, and it will always fluctuate, and it's an estimate, so we don't have to get super scientific on this at some point is just too much overhead well i certainly don't care i'm just noticing that six that's the first time i've ever seen a weight of six i didn't know if that was going to explode everything else somewhere no it's all good so if you see it around the uh, weights that don't match the, the the labels please please correct them cool okay good to know um jonathan uh, and alexander I, I refinement yes yeah, so, cool. uh on the refinement on this thing i, I know from the uh 
the the retrospective earlier, we talked about putting some of like the technical details into the issue um, uh, from one of Mehmet's comments. And do we want to have that as a requirement, like that there is some kind of at least technical direction put into these issues before we say it's ready for dev? I I think that's a good idea. I, like I'm I'm new and I think it's part of that, but uh, I've had difficulty reading an issue and understanding what exactly was the outcome of it without reading a lot, the whole thing. If if there's a summary of of uh, so I'll put it in refinement and uh, and uh, we'll, we'll do that. Is that okay? I'll go with that. And especially since Mehmet is on this issue and he was the one who brought it up, I think it'd be a good one to to put in like just, you know, just in the issue description. Yeah. Um, I think uh, Alexander's got some stuff already in there. Um, so if, if we want to put that in the actual description rather than in the comments below. Yeah. Um, that's, so we that's can cool. move the technical detail to description. Yeah, I yeah, would I, just make a section. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Nick. No, Andrew. I interrupted you. Go ahead. I was just going to say, if you wouldn't mind, I think having a like a technical details, just make another label for it down at the bottom. Uh, Jonathan, to your point, anything that is going to be sort of part of the final ticket should be in the description. I know this is a thing that I've struggled with. There's lots of interesting discussions and decisions get made down in the comments. Don't get carried back up to the top into that description and then they get lost. So it's absolutely the place to put them. Yeah, I've noticed that a lot too, especially when there's a lot of discussion going on. Um, it's like, what was the final decision made on the technical direction on this uh, and uh, making sure that we keep those up to date? Yeah, three months of discussions that you got to read through. Cool. Oh, that's, uh, a, that's a short one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Alexander, I've, I've uh, assigned to you um, for now, okay? Yeah, and Mehmet actually was the one who uh, refined this uh, ticket. So, And he, he put a little bit in uh, his refinement uh, comment down below. Uh, so I'll probably just copy and paste what he said and what I said to the top and then uh, it works. assign it again. And Jonathan, when once Alexander does that, you happy for him to move this to ready for dev, or do you want back end to have a look as well before? Oh, Mehmet is already taking a look at the back end on this. Okay, that's what he was doing. Cool. True, I see that. Thank you. Um, do we need to go over these questions? No, they were in a comment in the uh, ticket and Matt and Andy adequately resolved them. Thank you, sir. Cool. Moving on to link an existing GitLab issue to a security vulnerability. Uh, so if my communication was choppy on the previous issue, this one is even worse because I didn't have time to go over it. So who wants to take over? Up uh, here, I left some questions. I can do this. So basically, this ask is for uh, much like a, an MR or an issue where there's a section that says related issues. Um, there's now a section like that in vulnerabilities uh, in the standalone page. And so there's related issues, and there's an add issue and create issue button that is now separate well there's those buttons and <laughs> and then i asked a couple of questions below regarding when the create issue, create issue button appears and whether it's that separate from like resolve with merge request button um those are a few questions i had cool so looks like a bit more work before we can add weights to this um so we'll follow up uh, asynchronously. Is that the plan? Yeah. I, I don't think there's any discussion that needs to happen synchronously right now. Sweet. Cool. Uh, let's go to this one. Third party list view, step one. So I, does anyone want to go? I can also talk to this one. 
Yes, please. We're good. Okay, so this one, if you want to scroll, I just noticed, realized I was looking at my page when you ha you're the one sharing. Um, scroll down a little bit to the first screenshot. Yeah, so this one is basically is updating this security dashboard view. To, uh, on the right side, there's going to be a scanner column, which lists the type of scanner and where it's from. And then there's also in the description, there is going to be the um, line that needs to be updated be below the main description. And identifier, okay, so then with multiple identifiers, apparently only one of them is going to be chosen for the description uh, above the line of code, which I think we do now, actually. And I had a few questions on this cool. as well that um, also- One thing email. that I want to comment is uh, I, think, I think these little widgets are currently broken because of the move from REST API to GraphQL. I, I was verifying an issue yesterday that was left open to double check. And either I double checked it wrong or it's, it's indeed broken. So before we start on this, just keep an eye on it because it, it might already be broken. Sorry. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, no, that's, that's totally fine. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, there's another issue regarding that link and the icons uh, that sit next to it. Um, so that, but I don't think that this link is a part of this work uh, at all. Yeah, because it's cool. uh, ha uh, handled in another issue. Yeah, yeah. Do we need any backend work on this or is this already available to us, the stuff we need here? The, I'm assuming the, this is all GraphQL, I'm assuming there will be backend work to make more data visible to the GraphQL query. I would need to verify that though. Cool, let me, let me make a note. Um, John, are you happy, happy to, for me to assign this to you, to ask you to, to verify that? Sure. We can do that. Um, any other any other points worth discussing, Alexander? Do you want to talk a little bit about this new drop down? Is just a new filter, is it? Oh yeah, I forgot about that. That's step one point two. Yeah, it looks like I mean we already have the uh, filters. No, we don't. We don't. Uh, oh, we do have a scanner filter. No, we don't. I don't know. I have to look into that. I, I thought I thought we had the scanner filter, but it's not specific to you know GitLab versus white source or third party scanners. Um, so there's probably something on the filter side that needs to be updated, but that seems like you know, I don't know if that's a separate issue or it's definitely two different MRs is is my thought is getting that extra column and updating the filter. Oh yes, there are many MRs to to this issue. That's for sure. Uh, if we if we think this is going to span uh, more than one iteration, uh, Matt, would you mind would you mind if I created a, a an issue and moved uh, sorry an epic and moved this issue to be a design issue under that epic and and so we can try out the the epic planning um, thing that we discussed before? Yeah, that should be fine. Yeah, I don't see cool. why we wouldn't do that to split it out. Because we have multiple issues about third-party scanners um, that are needed to be handled that probably would fall underneath there, right? Yeah, this is already part of a, a much bigger epic with I guess five or six um, issues already. Yeah, I like the way the, the some of these epics are yeah. going up to the to the minimal to complete um, uh, key result the 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 product stage. That's really helpful. 
So cool. If you if you're happy for, for me to that to do that, I'll, I'll keep an eye once 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 I have the clarity from the engineering teams. Oh, so we have an epic already for this one. I think we just need this issue split out into more than into a couple different things here because we have like what step one point one and one point two in the same issue. Um, is the epic is the epic you're talking about this one here? The enhanced yeah. dashboard, right? Yeah, so yeah. so that my yeah all right. I'll have a look offline if uh, if I want to reuse this one or not, because um, uh, this one is for July. Yeah, I suppose it's not that big. Cool. Anyway, I'll decide decide offline if if I want to split or not. But it sounds like we, we're just gonna create issues from from this issue to to work on. That's the plan. Yeah, Jonathan, you you may be right. We had this originally, I think, together, and so we. Ah, I just tried to highlight on the screen too. I hate that. The links aren't clickable. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you want to <laughs> click on anything? This one? No, 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 no. Just, just noting that yes, they are really part of the same issue right now. Uh, step one dot one and one dot two. Probably would be better to actually just clone this issue into, you know, uh, copy over just the pieces needed for and. Uh, make an update filters as an actual separate step 1.2 issue. And then I can update um, this and the other one accordingly. Is that clear enough? I'll do that and uh, I'll I'll hand over to you, Matt, if, to see if uh, if I missed anything. I just been wanting to practice some some try my hand. Hey, why don't you go practice on Sam's stuff? <laughs> no, no, <he's, laughs> he he asked me to practice on yours. He said you you really good sport about uh, messing up your backlog. <laughs> oh, anything? one thing about yeah. this one, I I'll have to go find the issue. I think it's the dependency scanning group they may be in the same area i don't know if it's this iteration or they were planning it for 13.2 they have a very similar issue where they want to update that well what's currently named the reports filter which is going to be renamed the scanner filter that drop down to not just break it out by dast sas dependency and then vendor name they actually want to get more granular with the specific scanner of type for GitLab. So for instance, you might actually see our different like SAS scanners listed out or the different types of container dependency scanners. Just something to keep in mind. I'll try to locate that issue to make sure that there's not a collision with another team. Let me flag this with a cross group label. And then if, if, it, if there's no cross group, we'll just remove it. Thank you, Matt. Uh, yeah, and, and going off of that, Jonathan, there'll probably be backend work to update the GraphQL for different different scanners. I don't know. You're gonna have to look into that. Yeah, I, I, I think there are. I think there will be. So I will. I'll look into that and try to put some technical details um, into the proposed implementation. Um, and this is this was one of the issues we talked about in planning breakdown last week that right there is point one underneath this issue is we could use some help figuring out how to bring different scanners into our local environments or set that up so that we could um you know lo dev locally so sam has replied uh, i've left a, a comment and he sent a link to his to his project it is pretty straightforward um, nice. If you haven't seen it, I'll, I'll share the link here. Yeah, if you could put the link here, that'd be great. I'll share. I'll share um, in a couple of hours. I've got more more meetings. Um, we've got uh, three minutes left. How are we feeling? Do we want to have a look at this or call it a call it a day? <laughs> I can I can go through this real quick. Uh, awesome. 
uh, we so uh, there was a, a misunderstood exactly what was being asked for in the um, original uh, in the issue. Uh, so um, it was if, well, first it was not doing anything. Um, it wasn't <sighs> taking the um, the branch. It was just going to like the default branch, I believe, at first. And so this, what I ended up changing it to was pulling from whatever branch the pipeline ran against. Now, so now the problem is if there is a, a squash, that, that branch goes away and we need to be able to repoint it at, uh, you know, where that, the, uh, the vulnerability would be currently rather than where it was in that other commit. So basically, so you need to update the existing finding to point to the new location. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Uh, it needs to point to, uh, you know, the correct shot. Like if it gets merged, it, we've yeah. got to be able to point it to the new, the new one rather than the, the, the one that went away. Um, Lindsay went ahead and put this one back into refinement. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, so I can add, I'll, I'm going to look into that one, add some details to that to, to push it forward. Okay, how how are you feeling about the the feasibility? Um, I've I've read some discussions where people were wondering how we would be able to identify them. I don't know. Um, <laughs> that, that that's one of the things I got to look into to see you know and, and read through that see you know, how we can possibly possibly make that happen. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's super if, simple because if, if if you've got if like I a would, a vulnerability that that looks the same. I don't know if the fingerprinter will give you the the right entry. It might require some changes to the uh, the, the squash function um, when you click the squash button in, in GitLab or uh, and uh, or even locally. I, I'm not entirely sure because if you squash it locally, it goes away and well, it'll be that's drive. what I mean. So then when the when the scanner runs again. It'll pick, you'll still pick up the vulnerabilities, but with a different hash and possibly a different line. Then yeah. how do you map that to, to the previous scan on the same branch? Maybe, maybe you throw away. Anyway, you, you're going to have to think about it. I don't think it's right. exactly straightforward. No, this, this one I don't think will be a straightforward one uh, to have to implement. Um, it'll, it'll take some thinking. I'll probably have to pull in Pierre, uh, Philippe, Philippe uh, to... Why I can't hear. There's a wait uh, in here. I don't know who added it. Uh, I don't trust it. Um, um, the two, I think, was for the original, what I thought the original issue was. Right. Um, so that wait is, is that, that wait needs to, needs to go away for now. Um, yeah. All right, cool. And and from a from a product point of view, Matt, any any desired desirable behaviors or any any comments on how how you like this resolved? Are you no no just do, uh, do, do, I, <laughs> get it well, done? No. Yeah, no. I mean, honestly, I didn't see this one in um, in the agenda this morning, so I didn't relook really at this one more carefully. I added it about 30 minutes ago. Yeah, so I'll need to take a look. Um, you know, I'll be honest, when we get into the nuances of all of the branches and the commit IDs and all the things with the vulnerabilities, I really don't have a great answer for it. Um, I liked a comment that Lucas Charles had made in a very similar related issue to fingerprinting that he doesn't see this happening in a lot of our competitors' products because we have such a complex branching. Um, just workflow in general. So this may be sort of an us challenge to solve. Yeah. It, I, I, I put it to 13.1, um, but I, this is probably one of those stretch ones um, for 13.1. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's good with me. I think um, to take it up a level or two, just in general, I think it's going to be a big challenge for us, but also some place where we can provide a lot of value if we are able to help people identify if a particular vulnerability has been reintroduced in you know a separate branch maybe that was 
both pulled from the same master at the same time and one was was a lot delayed or somebody may have screwed something up and reintroduced something themselves just trying to give a sense of hey we think we've seen this before so maybe you don't need to look at it mm -hmm. um, I guess from a, the fingerprinting perspective maybe this is way beyond the scope of this but do you see that as something coming from the security report like the scanner is providing enough of it, you know, be it a hash or that plus line numbers where they're sort of telling us this is the com composition of the defect and we make that call just by comparing it or? I, I think I think that would probably be it. I think if we can, if we see that, if we, if we look at this, the vulnerability and we see that this branch no longer exists, then we have an opportunity to go find, you know, where it might've gotten merged or squashed or, you know, we can take a look at that. Um, you know, it, it more, kind of almost a best guess, um, yeah, maybe with a flag on it saying, hey, th this, this, um, the branch no longer exists where this vulnerability was found, and it, we think, and, you know, best guess is here uh, type thing. Um, yeah. So that, that initial thought on that. All right. I'm calling it. It's time. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>